Hello and welcome to the healing sheet, the teachers of the healing document. Um, and first of all, I'm going to show an example of doing a quick healing assignment and how to put it in game, which is the absolute basics. And after that, I'm going to slowly go through all of the features of the sheet. First of all, you're going to want to uh, set up your roster and your setup, which is on this page, watch the setup guide to get more information on this. Um, but after you've done that, you have this page where you can see your setup up at the top here. Um, and then what you're going to want to do is basically just go through for each boss mechanic, consider which uh, coolant you want to assign, and then you want to assign a cooler by clicking on one of these cells with a drop down menu. You can either just click the drop down menu, double click it, or begin typing, and it, it will auto complete. Um, and then for each assignment, you want to pair up with the name so the person knows who whose cooldown this is. Um, this will also make MRT for the MRT node, as well as the case we got um, that calls all the red cooldowns in the sheet. It helps them know whose cooldown it is. Um, so we're going to fast forward one second. Boom. Done. I have now filled up um, an entire bus page with all the cooldowns I want. And then I'm going to click the load button up at the red box here. It's going to take... Whoops. Looks like I need to accept the script first. This happens the first time you try to click one of the buttons in the sheet because you just need to accept some scripts to allow them to make changes to a document. So we're just going to quickly do that by clicking continue, your email, click advanced, click on the unsaved one here. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Click allow. Good. Now we're going to click the load button. We'll take one second and then the red box here will turn green. That means we now have our MRT node. We can just click it once. Copy paste, go in game, open up your method rate tools to the node, paste it in here, and there you go. Now you have all of your cooldowns in game. You can also do this to uh, clean it up a bit. Um, and now it'll basically only show cooldowns with my with your name, uh, but since my name isn't in the node, it's completely empty but it makes it not look like this on your screen. So now I'm going to go ahead and go through all of the features of the sheet. First, let us start with all the features up at the top section here. We have already covered the green box. Um, right above that, there's a version check, um, which will basically turn red and say it is out of date. Once I make an update to my sheet, with some changes to this specific bus. So if you see this as red, go to the Discord and check out which changes I've made. Um, if you want to update your page, then you can easily do that by just pulling, going to my spreadsheet. Then you take the bus you want to update, uh, right click it, click copy to existing spreadsheet, and then you just find your spreadsheet and copy it to it. When you've done that, you can just take all your cooldowns you've done before, paste them in here, and now you're up to date. Then we have a couple of settings here. We have the fix formatting button, uh, which is there essentially to fix small formatting errors that might happen when you copy paste around. So I'm just going to quickly break something. Boom. So I just copied my cooldowns from another sheet, which made the sheet a bit confused on the formatting here. So you can see it looks a bit weird. So I can just click the fix formatting button and it will clean it up. Then we have a couple of settings here with some checkboxes. Just click on off. We have the hidden cooldowns in note, which basically just takes all of this and hides it. Um, but it will still work with the Wigar that calls your cooldowns. You just can't see them in the node when you're in combat. Then we have the dynamic timers, which is the 
yellow number here on the side, um, which is the actual important number because that's the timers I set up for you. They will count down in game, just like your boss mods, like DBM or Big Switch does. And uh, they will basically always be accurate because I set up a trigger, like a Uyghur that triggers on a certain event. Um, so you always want the dynamic timer on. The static timer is the white number here, which you can see is like just chronologically how long into the fight you expect the mechanic to happen. The reason the two numbers here are different is because the uh, the mechanics here, you can see it goes from 149 to 6 seconds. These mechanics begin in a new phase that is triggered when you kill a certain mob. So depending on push timers, this might happen at different times. Um, for that reason, we need the these timers to begin when that mob dies. And that is all something I set up for you, so you don't really need to worry about that. If you want to know how to set up your own timers, you can watch the video on how to set up your own timers. Then we have the preset timers. Um, this is only necessary so far on Kurok because Kurok has a lot of phases that begin at different times. So you need to tell the sheet when you expect to enter a phase and it will calculate the expected phase timers. Um, the only thing this affects is the, uh, the white number here, the white static timer. It doesn't affect the yellow timer, which means that even if you don't do this, and even if yours aren't entirely accurate, you can still use the sheet and your timers in game will still be accurate. Um, and I also set this up to be somewhat accurate with what a progressing guild would expect. But when you begin killing on a farm, you might want to take down the number. Say you don't spend 45 seconds in, uh, in submission, you can lower that number a bit. And then all of these timers change. Um, I've also set up so you can choose which element you do. So you can see these are earth abilities. But if we do the frost element, then they change the frost abilities. That's really only cosmetic. So you don't have to do that. Um, but most bosses don't have this. They just have an expected kill timer, which will like gray out the final abilities of the fight. If we say 10 minutes here, then it will gray out this one because you skip that. Then we have the setup, which is basically just the setup pulled from the setup page here and all the people who are in on the bus. And that is nice to know because then you know who you can assign. Next to that, we have a column saying assigned and not in the setup, which looks at all of your assignments here. And then it warns you if someone is assigned who aren't in on the setup, which is a prompt for you to know you should probably replace this guy. So if we say uh, Viserio is here, then you can see Viserio shows up up here. Um, so you either want to look through the sheet, find the person and replace them, or you can use the replace button. The replace button is this, where you can say uh, we want to replace one guy. So we want to replace the serial with another guy. Let's do the uh, shadow priest. Um, for this, you'd probably want to be like sensible and replace a warrior with a warrior, uh, because it's probably going to be a rallying cry if it's a warrior. And for this priest, it's evangelism. but. It can be nice when you swap around and set up between similar classes. Um, but basically just write the names, click replace, and then we should see the serial disappear there. Then we have a small section here where either I have written a comment that I want you to read on the bus, um, or you can write your own notes here. Um, these might just be you have a note on which setup you have and why, or you might want to have a note that your radars need to do this and that. And then you can click this and it will add it to the green box. So it would come up at the top here. Also small note, I have hidden four extra columns up here. If for some ungodly reason you need to assign 12 cooldowns to one ability, um, then you have the opportunity to do that now. Uh, God help you. 
Then we have this section here that says display coulombs, and then we have a list of rate coulombs, mobility, externals, personals, utility, and then unnamed. Um, this will is a filter for which coulombs you want to show in this section. So these are the coulombs I have categorized as rate coulombs. What this is for is to make it clear when you you add a certain point of assignment here, you can see which coulombs are available for me to assign now. They would be shown by an icon, which means they're ready. Um, and the number is the remaining cooldown on a spell at that point, uh, which helps you make a healing assignment where you're utilizing as many cooldowns as possible by using them on cooldown very often. Um, if they're yellow, it means they're almost ready. If they are red, um, let's just make one that breaks here. Yeah. So say we assign Ancestral Guidance two times in a row here, uh, with only 40 seconds between each other. Then we're going to see here that it turns red, which is a warning that Ancestral Guidance was used too early. So you need to probably go and double check that. Um, so if we fix this, it will clean it up again. No cooldowns used too early. Each cooldown here is a cooldown linked to a player. So you can see who is assigned. Um, if you don't remember what a cooldown is called here, like uh, this one, which is new, you can just hover over it and it will link to the Wowhead link. You can also read about it there. Uh, there are some checkboxes here, which allows you to disable a column of cooldowns. Um, so now if I import the uh, MRT node here, it won't show all my Dispreece cooldowns in this column. Uh, which can be nice if you have like a setup where you from week to week might have a wrestler druid in one week and a monk another week. And the only thing you really do is just choose which one you want to show. So you can just disable one, enable the other one. Um, in a similar vein, you also have some checkboxes out here, which allow you to display the timer for say these ads. You can display those even if no cooldown is assigned. Because as you can see in here, it only imports the timers uh, that have cooldowns assigned to them, which is to avoid the, uh, the cooldown list being unreasonably long. You are also allowed to delete by just clicking delete in entire row here. Perfectly fine. You are allowed to move rows with the only thing in mind that these timers out here need these timers to be chronological. So me moving incinerating raw up here uh, is not, it breaks these timers basically. Uh, the sheet will throw a, a red box here to tell you that something is not in order. So we'd probably want to move this down to where it fits. So freely insert move delete rows. A couple of more niche notes would be uh, if you want to assign multiple people to one thing, like let's say the uh, so this mark, you can just write, um, you can just write them like this, and they will all be assigned to this one because no cooldowns are assigned to them, so they will just take the next cooldown. So this way, we could assign four people to a so uh, soap and mark. The everyone tag uh, here is used a lot because you can assign text warnings to everyone. You can assign health pots, you can assign health stones or gateways. Uh, this is often very useful. There are also a couple of other uh, options like the group options, which will just look at your rate group. Uh, or you can go by role, damager, healer or tank. Unfortunately, it doesn't work with range and melee. You don't have to write exactly what is in this cooldown list. You are allowed to just write text. So we could say group up by, and then we make a triangle mark. And you can just write this text, which will then throw an error or a warning, which is fine. Um, but it will format that. Let's assign this to everyone, by the way. It will then format that 
in a way the Uyghur understands. And instead of the Uyghur showing an icon, it will show a text warning for everyone to group up by triangle mark. If you want to learn how to add coulombs yourself, you can check out the individual video on that. If you want to learn how to make timers yourself here, you can also watch the video on that. Those are two short videos, um, but they're good to watch because it is a little complicated to make timers, but not very complicated. And I think that was it. This is probably already a very long video. I apologize. Um, a final note, a final, final note. If you want to know how to get big, beautiful rates uh, assignments like this, you can check out the Patreon, uh, where I have documents full of uh, examples of rate coulombs for every bus. So you get a clear idea of where should I assign which type of coulombs, like, oh, master spell is great here. I will indicate that for you, and you can see where stack coulombs are good, or where the disc priest might want to ramp. Um, but yeah, I fill out an example of this for different healing comps, and I represent all classes. So you should maybe go check that out or watch one of the other guides.